Yo, what's up, Calc Gang? All right, we got a nice physics problem on our hands here. So we got a 40 gram ball, and it drops 2.1 meters, and then it goes back up 1.66 meters. And it wants us to find the impulse of the reaction, and then another part of the question. So let's start with finding the impulse of this reaction. So what do we know about the impulse? So the impulse is a vector. So it's equal to the force times the change in, uh, change in time, basically. So if you were to like do something like that, it's like, what is, what is the force you exerted? And what's the change in time? Okay, so this isn't gonna help us, right? We can't really find change in time in a problem like this. So we wanna rearrange this to find something we actually can use. So you can say is impulse is equal to force, which is equal to mass times acceleration times delta t, right? Okay, well then let's expand this even further. It's equal to mass, and then acceleration we know is change in velocity over change in time, but then you're multiplying it by change in time. So the change in time is gonna cancel out. And you're just going to find that the impulse is equal to mass times the change in velocity. Now, change in velocity is something we can actually work with on this problem. We have the mass, and we can find change in velocity from the height. So I'm going to sit down for this. Let's get started. Okay, so how do we want to do this? Change in velocity. Well, to do that, we want to find the velocity, like the moment before it hits the ground, and then the moment right after it hits the ground. So to do that, we can use some of our kinematics formulas. So we know that velocity is equal to acceleration times time plus initial velocity, but we actually don't want to use that. What we're going to actually want to use is this equation. So velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus two gravity times height. So velocity initial is zero because it's you know starting from nothing, you're dropping it. So then we can say velocity is equal to square root of two times gravity times the height. And this is also, we have, we have gravity, of course 9.8, one, and height is 2.10. So you do this and you get the velocity here on part one is equal to 6.42 meters a second, but it's actually downward, so it's gonna be negative. Okay, nice, now we need to find the velocity when it bounces back up. So we know that if the ball was to fall from this point and land right there, like the moment right before it hits the ground, the velocity would be the same as if it bounced and went back up. So we're gonna do basically the exact same thing we did right here. So you can say, you know, here again, uh, so the velocity part two is equal to, you know, two times gravity times the height, which is 1.66 this time, which this is equal to uh, 5.71 meters a second. This is going back upward though. Okay, so then we can find the change in velocity, delta V is equal to velocity final, which would be velocity two minus velocity one, which is equal to you know 5.71 minus negative 6.42, which this is equal to uh, 12.1 meters a second. Okay, finally, we can go back over to here. So our impulse is equal to the mass, which is 40 grams, divided by 1,000 to get uh, kilograms, and you're gonna multiply it by 12.1, and then this, when you do this, uh, will give you 0 0.485 newtons per second. That's our impulse right there. So that's part A of this. Um, Part B, let's do part B. Okay, so part B, what is it asking? So if the ball is in contact with the slab for a time of 1.9 milliseconds, find the average force on the ball during impact. Okay, so once again, this is gonna be way easier than this other part because we can just plug it right into this formula, right? So let's do that. Okay, so we know that our impulse is this, so it's gonna be 0 0.485 equal to force is what we're trying to find times change in time, and that's our change in time is uh, 0 point, or 1.9, 1.9 milliseconds divided by 1,000 to get it in actual seconds. And then, so we're gonna multi move this over, of course, just divide it by it. So, I don't know. Uh, if you just solve this, I'm sure you guys are capable. It's equal to 255 newtons. And that's your answer to part B. Yeah, so that's how you do this problem. Uh, yeah, basically you just need to learn how to rearrange this formula, uh, try to find things that you know how to use, and uh, use it to solve. So yeah, good luck on your Calc homework, guys. Physics homework, I mean.